Hello, and welcome to this introduction to the Newcastle-upon-Tyne Bach Choir's next concert as part of the Early Music at Newcastle series. I am Eric Cross, the choir's musical director, and this talk provides some background to Bach's St John Passion, which we are performing in King's Hall on the evening of Saturday the 9th of March. Although passion music was popular in some parts of Germany in the early 18th century, in particular in Hamburg, it was new to Leipzig. In 1721, Johann Kuhnau had introduced the genre to the city with his St Mark passion, but he died a year later. By the time his vacant post of cantor at the Thomas Schuler was filled by Bach in 1723, there was no real tradition of passion music to build on. It appears that Bach composed five passion settings, but only two have survived complete. His appointment as cantor at Leipzig involved providing cantatas for every Sunday and feast day of the church year. But for the Good Friday service, a full setting of the Passion story was required. And these alternated each year between the two main Leipzig churches. Thus, the premiere of the St John Passion took place on the 7th of April 1724 in the Nikolai Kirche almost exactly 300 years ago. The work was repeated with alterations at the Thomas Kirche in March the following year. Later, it received two further revisions under the composer's direction, one for a performance, probably in 1732, in which many of the changes of 1725 were discarded, and one on the 5th of April 1749, which was very similar to the premiere in 1724. Our performance contains three rarely heard numbers from the 1725 version. The anonymous text of the St John Passion is a compilation based in part on the famous Passion poem of B. H. Brockus. The biblical passages from St John's Gospel are set as recitative for the Evangelist, Jesus and various minor characters, or as choruses with urgent orchestral accompaniments which represent the mob calling for Jesus' crucifixion. The arias, whose singers would also have sung the choruses, set free contemplative texts and provide a personal response to the action. The chorales, using traditional Lutheran words and melodies, offer a communal response and frequently employ bold, striking harmonies. The whole work, like Bach's St Matthew Passion, is framed by two massive choruses. The St John Passion survives in a manuscript score, probably dating from 1739, and a set of individual performing parts in the hands of several copyists with various annotations by the composer. The score is a fair copy in Bach's hand for the first 20 pages, but then it breaks off and was completed by a copyist some 10 years later. Here we have the opening page of the score with the instrumental introduction to the first chorus.
there are several key differences between this score, which is very close to the original version of 1724, and the 1725 performance given in the Thomas Kirche, a number of which serve to emphasise the concepts of sin and guilt. For the second performance, Bach replaced the opening chorus Herr unser Herrscher with the massive O Mensch bewein dein Sünde groß, O man bewail your grievous sins, that Bach borrowed a couple of years later, transposed up a semitone from E flat to E major for the end of the part one of the St Matthew Passion. Later in the first part, Bach also included an extra number. Himmel Reiser, in which the bass soloist has a highly dramatic vocal line depicting the text, Heavens Open, Earth Tremble. Above this operatic style aria, with its angular melodic writing and unexpected harmonies, the soprano sings phrases of the chorale, while two flutes interweave to create a trio sonata-like texture over a jagged bass line in the continuo. <laughs> Other changes for 1725 include a replacement for the two tenor arias. The first French-style Ach mein Sinn was replaced by another operatic-style piece with frequent changes of tempo. And in part two, Er Wege wie sein blutgefärbter Rücken, see how his blood-stained back, was replaced by Ach, windet euch nicht so, Ah, writhe not so, where the writhing souls beneath the cross are depicted by the twisting lines of the accompaniment for two oboes and continuo. The other main change, apart from the extension of the recitative describing the rending of the veil in the temple from three bars to a more dramatic seven, comes right at the end of the work. Following the saraband-like chorus of farewell, Ruhet Vol, instead of the simple four-part chorale, Ach Herr, Lass Dein Lieb Engelein, Bach introduced another chorale fantasia, this time on Christe du Lamb Gottes, in which sighing phrases in the woodwind and strings and the key of G minor emphasise the burden of sin as opposed to the more optimistic major key of the original 1724 ending.
A final change from all Bach's Leipzig performances that we hope our modern audience will appreciate is that there will be no sermon in between parts one and two. A central feature of the original Good Friday liturgy where the sermon probably lasted around an hour. Nevertheless, our performance provides an opportunity to appreciate the drama of the John Passion, whose intensity, especially in some of the powerful choral interjections with their often chromatic and unpredictable melodic lines, builds throughout the second part, and also a chance to hear some fine but rarely performed music from the 1725 version. 